Hello, AP Latin students. Welcome to our, I think, sixth prediction now. This one is a little bit broad, but you'll see why in a second. Uh, first of all, it's May 4th. You might be able to tell uh, from my Star Wars clothing. May the 4th, may the force be with you, especially on your APLAT test here coming up in just over a week. I know you're studying hard. I know you're reviewing. I know you're cramming. And I know that you're probably taking several other AP exams as well. So I hope the week is going well for you. And I hope your year is ending uh, strong. But let's take a look at our sixth prediction here. And appropriately, this is book six. And the first about 30, 40 lines or so is what I'm telling you that you should study here. So 295 to about 335 or so, 336. And I'm telling you to study this because of something that if you've watched my previous predictions, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate here, which is that when this syllabus was created in 2013, there were a few chunks of the Aeneid that have never appeared on an AP exam before. And 295 till about 332, 335, actually, I think it's 332, had never appeared never once appeared on, an, on a, a, a syllabus before, and everybody, these lines have never appeared on an AP exam. There is so much here, so many kind of hot topics that the AP exam loves to grab onto. There's so much here for, for the, the college board to ask us to see that we know what we're talking about. So you get all of the context and the geography and the description of Charon here in 295 to 305 or so, what he's doing. And that's that's great multiple choice fodder, right? You could ask all sorts of questions about this. You've got figures of speech here, Lumina, the classic sort of metonymy for uh, that word substitution for eyes. You get Cooey here, this wonderful dative, uh, starting out that relative clause there, that dative of reference. Um, you get all of these grammatical and cultural elements here, in addition to just some really, really good Latin in those first few lines. Then we get down here, if you go to uh, 308, 309, et cetera, this quam multa in silis, the quam multi glomerantor. So you get not only the anaphora, that repetition of that phrase, but everybody, that phrase that starts out a, a, a simile here. So looking out at, at and, and what Aeneas sees is just like leaves falling in the autumn, right? It's just like birds migrating. And so, of course, for an essay question, anytime you have a simile is, is, is really, really good fodder for a discussion question, for an analytical question. Then when we come down here, it's like we're, hit, we're hitting the triad of everything that loves uh, to, to appear in an AP exam in 318 you get a speech, Dic o virgo, quid vult concursus ad omnem. And you get uh, Aeneas addressing, of course, virgo, and that would be a great question too. To whom does virgo refer? And that, of course, is Sybil. And then you get in 322 her response, an quisa generate. And my goodness, even in those two words, hey, that patronymic an quisa, you know, to whom does that refer, right? Generate, boy, what is the form of that? Because doesn't that look like an imperative, but believe it or not, it is a vocative. Hey, you, born of Anchises. So there's just so much here that you can right. uh, that you can um, really go through and think of as fodder for all variety of college board of AP type questions here. And so I'm saying you got to know 295 to 332, like the back of your hand. I hope it pays off. Even if this doesn't appear, let's let's say this, even if this doesn't appear, hey, there's a lot of really good stuff here that builds that vocabulary of your Latin vocabulary, that builds your vocabulary of Latin syntax, of Latin grammar, of the storyline, all of that kind of thing. So study this hard and good luck on your APLAT exam in 2023, everybody. Walete.